What's up, guys? It's Friday, and so you know what time it is. It's time for What the Fitness. Let's get them. But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment. Oh, that algorithm. Parade Magazine is throwing their hat into, I guess, their opinions on nutrition. They did an article about what happens when you eat too much protein. The majority of the article wasn't terrible, so I don't want to, like, browbeat them too much. But there were some sections that I took quite a bit of issue with. So this is a section from the article near the end. In terms of what constitutes too much protein, Marjorie Cohn, a dietitian, says that anything above 2.5 grams and 3 grams per kilogram of body weight can be detrimental. This translates to about 176 to 211 grams for a 155 pound person and about 143 to 171 grams for a 125 pound person. I'm not sure what research literature she's referencing here. When someone consumes this amount of protein regularly, Cohn says that it can put too much stress on the kidneys, causing them not to function properly. If someone has certain medical conditions, such as kidney or liver disease, excess protein in their diet can worsen their medical condition. Stephanie Natiuk, I'm sorry, Stephanie, I apologize for getting your name wrong. Stephanie Natiuk warns, highlighting the risk that too much protein has to kidney health. Cohn offers up a similar warning saying high protein intake doesn't cause kidney disease, but can worsen kidney function in those with existing conditions. Based on what? empirical data. So it has been recommended for a long time that people with kidney disease limit their intake of protein. By the way, there is no evidence that protein harms a healthy kidney or liver. None. But for a long time, nephrologists and people in medicine have recommended limiting protein because they felt like urea gets eliminated by the kidneys. Urea is the ammonia containing waste product of protein. And therefore, if you're having a lot of protein, it's going to be hard on the kidneys. Except the problem is the research literature is really, really mixed on that. A recent study that we covered on this channel actually showed that people who ate higher protein with kidney disease had a lower rate of mortality than people who ate low protein. I'm not ready to say that if you have kidney disease, you should eat more protein, but I think the idea that if you have kidney disease, you definitely should eat less protein because it will kill you faster, I just am not sure that the data suggests that. I think it's very mixed right now and we need more research, but I think making statements like this are just reinforcing dogma that's out there. Hamnatiak says that consuming too much protein can also lead to weight gain and constipation and can increase the risk of not getting enough other important nutrients. Protein consumption can be excessive if it either is causing the person to consume too many calories overall, or if it's causing the person to consume too little of other key macronutrients, essentially by crowding them out of that person's diet. Because we get different nutrients from different foods, eating too much of the same thing can contribute to nutrient deficiencies in other areas. Of all the macronutrients to worry about overeating calories on, protein? Really? Protein is what we're worried about? Not carbs and fats, we're worried about protein. Okay, I'll play. Do me a favor, weigh out 120 grams of cereal and then weigh out 120 gram chicken breast and then go eat each of them and let me know which satiates you more. It is very difficult to overconsume protein. In fact, uh, Jose Antonio did a study where I think they fed over four grams per kilogram of protein per day. And even though they were consuming that much protein, the people didn't gain body fat because protein is very satiating and protein has the highest thermic effect of food of any of the macronutrients. So thermic effect of food refers to how much energy we have to put in to digestion, absorption, and metabolism of a macronutrient in order to get the energy out. So something like fat is like zero to three percent. So if you eat 100 calories from fat, you net about 97 to 100 calories. Carbohydrates are five to 10 percent. Eat 100 calories from carbohydrate, you net out about 90 to 95 calories. Protein is about 20 to 30 percent, meaning if you eat 100 calories, you net out about 70 to 80 calories. Yes, if you overeat enough protein, you could theoretically overconsume calories. But don't you make that argument for any macronutrient? And again, protein is more satiating on average and has a higher thermic effect of food. And in studies where people are told to eat very high protein, they don't gain body fat. So I don't really think we need to be worried about that. As for constipation, this is not an either or situation. If you eat high protein, you should try to eat high fiber. That's gonna help with gut motility. But you should be trying to eat high fiber on any kind of diet, not just high protein. It can be especially easy to overconsume protein bars or protein shakes, Natiex noted. 
Instead of relying on protein bars and steaks, she recommends focusing on whole food protein sources, which are more filling and nutrient rich, and not having multiple servings of supplemental protein in a single day if you can avoid it. Cohn echoes this, saying supplemental protein powders add up fast. Powders, shakes, and bars are the first I advise cutting back when clients are at or close to protein excess, whatever that means. They're easy to overconsume, often poorly portioned, and marketed as healthy snacks despite other unknown additives and sugar alcohols. If your diet primarily consists of protein-rich foods like meat, fish, and eggs, Natsiak says it's very impossible to experience gastrointestinal issues from not getting enough fiber. To avoid this, vary your protein sources to include sources like tofu, beans, chickpeas, and nuts, which both have protein and fiber. Again, the protein and fiber argument, it's, it's not either or, it's both and. Regardless of what type of diet you're doing, you should be trying to eat a lot of fiber. Unless you are somebody with an inflammatory bowel disease and you're in the middle of a flare-up, then you may need to limit your fiber. But regardless, high protein, high carb, high fat, you should be trying to eat high fiber. And then them saying, oh yeah, watch out for those protein powders. 25 grams of protein, 110 calories. 100 calories from protein, 10 calories from other sources. Those protein shakes, those are really gonna add up fast and put you over your calories. Were they listening to themselves as they said this? As far as trying to eat too many protein bars, I mean, I guess, even the best tasting protein bars, like David Protein, which I'm an investor in, they're still protein bars. It's not a candy bar, okay? No, nobody is gonna mistake a protein bar for a candy bar, I assure you. I'm also really not that worried about people over-consuming protein bars. It's all about what you're replacing with. Do I recommend Whole Foods? For sure. If you can get that protein in from Whole Foods, absolutely do that. You don't need shakes, you don't need bars in that case. But a lot of people have trouble meeting their protein goals, especially older people who, by the way, need more protein because they have blunted anabolic signaling. Elderly people have a tough time chewing protein-containing foods. Shakes and bars for them can be very beneficial. Or people who are just busy, or people who just don't like protein-containing foods and can get it another way. Again, whole food, absolutely big fan of whole food. Get whole foods in. But we're worried about calories from protein shakes? Are you guys serious? All right, so overall, I wouldn't say the article was terrible, but that section was pretty cringy. And quite frankly, it frustrates me when people who are dietitians aren't keeping up with the latest nutrition science, or they're not showing both sides of the argument. And this just kind of seemed like a scary protein hit piece in this section of the article. I'm not really worried about overconsuming calories from protein. And again, you should be getting enough fiber regardless of diet type. All right, guys, hope you liked the video and I'll catch you next week.